so you drive for as long and as far as you want, and then it doesn't matter where we go. So, so you, um, you'll start, you're just going to let me know when you're ready to go. Well, it's been a recording for the last two minutes. As soon as we drive, we're Good on. evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there you go. That's a perfect start. What was your nickname before Sticks? Do you remember? Did you have one? Well, well very, this took a long time to work out. Kerners is what they used to call me, but <laughs> my dad was called Harry, yep. and they used to call me Harry. Okay. And then it went to Henchman. They used to call my old man Henchman, and that went to me. And uh, when I came to Melbourne, David Glascott, well, two years before I came to Melbourne, David Glascott called me Sticks because I was very skinny before I got here. So David Glascott is responsible Glass, for Glass Sticks? was the one who started Sticks, yes. Okay, see, this is good. This is what I, I am a lot Glascott, God love him. He's a good man, Glasser. When you come over in uh, 86, had Kevin Sheedy been around for dinner and you were all set to go to the Bombers, but it was a phone call from Bruce Dool that changed everything, true or false? Was Kevin Sheedy used to come and have He'd roll up in Adelaide all the time and want to have lunch with me and we'd have lunch and a bowl of chips and a coke and that and we'd have a chat all the time. But Carlton, Carlton signed me up as a you know, 15, 16 year old on a Form 4 and I was always loyal to Carlton. Kevin Sheeter was the most persistent. I said, look, oh, I'm loyal to Carlton. Kevin said, no, well, I just want to keep coming to see you. So he did for many, many years. When Bruce Dahl did ring me, whatever year that was, he did ring me to say, we'd love you to come to Carlton, Stephen. And, I saw as one of the boys where he said, no, it's Bruce Dool here. So I couldn't believe it. So I said, hey, Bruce, how are you? All he said was, I'd love you to come to Carl. We really want you to come across. I said, oh, well, see what happens. I'm sort of happy here, but if I come, I'll come with you guys. And I had to do all the talking after that. Was, uh, Bruce, rang, Bruce rang me. I had to do the talking. But... You finally come over in 86. Yep. The start of 86. Why wasn't there room for you and Warren Ralph in the same four <laughs> months? This? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Gonzo was... He looked after me my first year there. He was good, and he was going to the Norton's pub on the Monday night. I never drank midweek, and um, but they did. They did. As you, you've interviewed a few of those blokes, oh, yeah, yeah. Monday night was a big night. Wednesday night, at King Street was the biggest night of the week. Your ex-teammates, <laughs> the ones that I've spoken to so oh, far, I can't believe terrible. they fit footy in. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. But when I got there, Mark McClure and I were sort of interchanging full forward, centre half forward, and yeah, that, that, they just stuck with that. Fair enough, fair enough. In those mid-80s, the player profiles in the record were, you know, I always look forward to them. So if you can imagine, <laughs> if you can take yourself back to that time yep. and, and um, let me know what you would have answered for the following questions. Okay, all right. Favourite food? Uh, seafood, I would have probably said. Back then? Probably, oh, yeah, yeah. there's a sophisticated palate. Well, not really. Been. I mean, that might have just been a nice piece of garfish for the fish and chip shop. <laughs> Favourite drink? I've been a beer man, mate. I'm a beer and a coke man. Okay. Got to drink more water, though, Sam. Yeah, yeah. Those are the three. Never, never to the hard liquor sticks. No, and no, I've have a vodka and orange when I but can't what? get much more beer down. Is it in a UDL can when you? <laughs> no, when it's got, no, no, never. No, okay. it's usually the glass. I don't, I don't do UDL cans. <laughs> vodka and passion fruit. Who would have thought? Oh, <laughs> that's terrible. Who would, terrible. Who would have thought those two went together? Yeah. Um, favorite movie. You know, around that time. Do you well, around that time, I, I know because I bet you I said that if you ever saw one, then Officer and a Gentleman, Richard Gere, outstanding movie. It was on Fox Classics recently. Classic to the blip hanger. <laughs> <laughs> Mayo. Mayo. Mayo and uh, Lewis Gossett Jr., one of the greats. Don't you eyeball me, boy. <laughs> At Carlton, you had Robert Walls, Jezza, yeah. and Parkin. Yeah. A couple of Carlton greats, or three Carlton greats. And Parker's got a bit of Hawthorne in him, unfortunately. But. If I say David Parkin to you, what, what, do you, what do you think about him? Well, he's, look, he's, he's been a great mentor to me. He's a mentor, a friend. He's a bit older than me. But uh, we're very close and um, had a lot of great times with him and still do. When you decided to come, he was, mm. he was coach. And then when you got, by the time you got here, he was gone. Well, Sam, how flat the record I was there. They've been trying to get me over there? there for six years. Yeah. And uh, David Park and got to know so well. And <laughs> practically the two weeks after I'd signed, he got the arse. So I'm on my way over, I'm on a footy trip, ready. To, when I got back, I'm going to Melbourne yeah. for Parko, <laughs> for <Frank> Carlton. <laughs> he's, got, he's got the flick. He's gone, and Robert Walls was there. And it was just, yeah, oh man, I didn't know what to do. I just, I mean, it wasn't going to stop me from being there, but I thought, hell, I've been, you know, this bloke I'd die for already, and I, I haven't even got to Carlton. 
yeah, and he, he got, wasn't there. He got so that, that was different. That he, got, was, he got sacked after two flags and the yeah, three finals appearance. Brutal club, the Carlton <laughs> Football Club's here. <laughs> brutal club. <laughs> well, Walsey uh, was your first coach yep. and uh, you had a lot of success. Yeah, well, I played in two, my first two years, I played in two grand finals. I mean, I, I just like my coaches. I don't care. <laughs> you know, that could be the worst coach ever, but I'm, I'll play for you and I'll be loyal to the death for them. And Robert Walls, he's exactly what I needed because I had to grow up quickly. I was a skinny kid when I got here. I was 85 kilos when I got here. And after one year, he said, you've got to get bigger. You've got to play Senna Ford against Glenn Dinning and Phillips and these big guys. And a year later, I was 100 kilos. So he wow. got me going. He, he really rode me hard, harder than I've ever been ridden in my life. I'll never forget Robert Walls. He's a close mate of mine now. He's in France at the moment. He sent me yeah. nice. He couldn't make the 150th. He sent me a really nice note because he was, you know, was a huge part of our footy club. And to win a flag for him, he, he made me captain in the, the next year. And to win a flag with him was, uh, you don't forget those things either. And That's, then Jezza uh, came. And then Jezza came, and Jezza, Jezza was good on George's time. It was a different training, Sam. You just, if you won, you went out for a kick, kick to kick and relax. But if you lost, he said, he threw the footies away and said, boys, go to the point post, we're doing some 400s. Isn't that the best thing about football? Yeah, there's a lot of, there's three different guys there. Yeah. And um, I enjoyed all of them. And all premiership? Coaches for yeah, yeah, and that's uh, you're up in lights doing that stuff. I, I will do some word association with some of your yep. old teammates. Ken Hunter, beautiful man, boy. I, I lived with Ken Hunter when I first came over, and what an absolute gentleman! He's very good to me. He looked after me. We go and play golf on Sundays, drinking cans sometimes. And... What's it like being a housemate of Ken Hunter? It's oh, it's just... love is quiet. He's a nice man. Um, you know what a player! Well, what a player! Yes. I played in the '87 flag with him and. He was up forward with me in those days. He moved from the yeah, back nice. half then, and he was in the twilight of his years. But in the '87 Grand Final, he was outstanding. And was there ever a time in that when you were living with Ken Hunter when he was washing and you were drying? I don't think so. I wasn't a great dishwasher. He didn't have a dishwasher. I wasn't moving in. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy said, "Come over a couple of weeks, sticks." This is January '86, and I stayed two years. <laughs> you live with Jimmy. I lived with Jimmy Buck for two years now. You said to me, "Did I?" What did I learn? Well, I had to, I learned a lot in those first two years. We, we had a, but we had the best time and no problems. Had jockeys. Greg Hall would come and wake me up at six o'clock every morning after track work, having breakfast. As I don't know how I was playing footy in those days, but very funny days and had a great two years at Bucks. A very close friend of mine to this day. I'll go to the 95 team, Earl Spaulding. He played a major role in winning the flag in 95 and yeah. uh, to come from Melbourne, he was one of those big hard blokes we needed. And um, I'll never forget the half forward line of the 95 grand final. Three blokes from other clubs, Clapo, Spaulding and Rice. And they were all hard, hard nuts. And Spaulding was just exactly what our club needed, big, tough, hard. Good man, and Spalding was a very good player off the field as well. Let's make no error about that. He, uh, we had some good ones, and he was right up there. Maybe it might be easier for me to ask, <laughs> was there anyone that was no good off the field <laughs> back in those days? Six? Is there anyone? What about, um, all right, let's get to your hair. Yes, look, it's had, that's, uh, speaking I, of issues. What's the, I <coughs> defend the hair. Right, well, all right, I'll get a couple of. We're going about the mullet or the grey, or what are we talking about? Well, nothing, nothing wrong with it. Grey hair. Ask no, anyone no. who's bald. That's, yeah, a, that's an that's old. Uh, that's an old line. But um, <coughs> the mullet you had, you had for a long time. Yeah. Fine. There was a different time. Sam, it wasn't on my own. I, in, in fairness to me, I'm not trying to say it was good or bad, but yeah. there were a few others that had them. Maybe not to my stupid look. Probably, probably none as memorable as yours. Those sticks. You could. I remember control. running. It used to. Darth Vader used to bounce off, you know, you've seen the shadows bouncing off the shoulders, the short front and back, and yeah, not a good look, a terrible look, the 80s. When did you think, when did you <laughs> find, I'm not judging, I'm not, no, no, that, but well, when did you, when did you say um, it's time to change? When I finished playing, it gradually started getting bit short, and one, yeah. one day a lady, she just sort of moved it up without me knowing, so oh, yeah. Yeah, she moved up. Gary Ayres' mother was horrendous, Greg Anderson, Tony Antropus. There were some horrific mullets out there. You ever and get um, I was, I was, yeah, we should have a dinner together a bit. <laughs> I'm happy to be in the, I'm happy to be in the um, all Australian team for mullets of that era. I think I've earned that right, and so have a few others are. That's I all I'm I, saying. I don't want to preempt anything if that happens, but you will be in the leadership group. Yeah, thank you. If that happens, I've got one last thing. True or false? Yeah. 
your voice broke when you were five. <clears throat> Probably about three, I think. Thank you. Do you know, Sam, <laughs> I, I, I hear myself, so I don't know, hear a replay or something, I hear myself talking and I just got to walk out of the room. Why? It's a, I think it's I find just... it a quite a soothing, I found this a soothing experience. Now, Sam, I don't, you don't have to replay this, but I just want to add, I can't believe I just had an interview with you and we had a laugh about everything yeah. and you did not once mention stand by a man or kicking out the full against Decimant. I'm better than that. I'm better than that, Sticks. I'm better than that. Oh, that's there funny. There you go. So that must be your greatest interview ever, then. That's the greatest interview ever. Thank you. Thank you, Sam Punk. <laughs> Thank the you, Carlton Steve. man forever. Thank you, Stephen Kernan.